brought to you by the blackout, you know, riding and everything, and just wanted to touch on this topic real quick. Um, you know, a lot of people, they get into situations, you know, because they put themselves in it for no apparent reason. Like, basically, people never really plan for stuff. And when they do plan, everybody always looking at the winning part, never looking at the losing. I mean, you always got to have a positive attitude on things. You know, I was looking at a guy who was talking about uh, doctors giving placebos to people. You know, sugar pills, but people call them, but you know, placebo. But nothing's wrong with you. But they know nothing is wrong with you. They're going to make you pay for these pills just so you'll get out of their face. And the thought of you getting better by taking pills, being a hypochondriac, is going to make everything all right. But the point of it is, if you have that open mind to where if you think you're going to get sick and you're already prepared for it and doing things to prevent you, like, Majority of the time when I get a cold or about to get a cold, throat start hurting and stuff, I know I should be doing this in general, but I go get some cod liver oil tablets. I go drink some orange juice, grab some halls. I'm pounding down the halls, taking my cod liver oil tablets, you know, taking vitamins to build my immune system up. Once I do that, everything's about half good. I go back to normal, you know, stop taking them, doing what I normally do, you know, just eating, doing whatever. And I go to say that because I had a, I heard a story about a guy, you know, a guy had a little business he was finna get into, make some decent money, and... guy he was basically saying how you know he's prepping for all this stuff to go right and on paper this guy was gonna be a millionaire on paper and somebody was like yeah you know what if a situation goes wrong it's not gonna go wrong he's like it's a win-win for me how, how could I go wrong with this situation it's a win-win okay no problem I, you know trying to play devil's advocate you know state the obvious something could happen and lo and behold it did and nothing else to be done about it it was just you know fell short kind of tried to bounce back didn't work and it's so you know I just say all that to say man people need to start planning more you know get more educated with stuff I mean I'm learning a lot in research and you know just looking into things but the crazy part is man everybody is more or less living on that high horse it's two ways you live. You living on a high horse or you living in fear. And you gotta come to the reality. You gotta live in both worlds, man. This world not perfect. You gotta live in both worlds. You know? We always had this um thing about being oppressed. And you hear it so much. I mean, even with slavery movies, you know, all this stuff going on. But the crazy part is, we got all these activists, we got all these people who are for the people, you know, I ain't gonna even go into the religion aspect, but you know, we got religions and everything else going for the black people. But when it's boiled down to it, oh, we can't get together, we can't stay on one accord, we can't do, we can't get on code. Why everybody got to get on code? Everybody's 
never been on cold like that. Throughout history, you had some people that were always the more dominant in the society. Because if everybody was on cold, who are the servants? If, if everybody was on cold, who are the dummies? Everybody's smart, everybody's getting money, everybody's happy, that's good. But the point of it was, it's never been like that in history. So for the people that actually don't want to learn, you give them a bone, and if they don't, if they, if they don't take it, move on to the next. I mean, that's how I'm starting to feel about things, you know. I mean, certain certain people, certain things, I'm not going to give up on in life. For my standing, you know, I firm believe in certain people and certain things, but everybody can't be helped. I mean, I'm just coming to the realization. Everybody cannot be helped. There's some people that like being lost. There's some people that like that fear in their life that keeps them comfortable being fearful of the unknown. Same thing like believing in God. You know, you got to have so much faith into believing a person you don't even see. You don't even know if it's real, knew if this person is real or not. And I talked to someone and I was telling them, I said, man, a lot of people go up and down about God being real and being fake. But the funny part is, it's like you got to have tremendous, like, tremendous faith to believe in God and can't see or none of this stuff. I mean, the whole thing, when it comes down to it, this earth was created. I mean, things do happen. Miracles happen. Just out of the blue. But the point of it is, if those miracles were happening all the time, and God was putting his hand down here and showing people, he'll have way more believers than he do now. But the point of it is, like, why would I go ahead and throw my hand in the pot and let people see who I am? I don't want you to come to me because, you know, I got a million dollars and I'm giving it to everybody. I want the people to come to me when I'm just walking around being humble and shaking hands and talking to people. You know, don't come to me because, you know, I got something to give. Come to me on your own merit. If you believe in me, hey. If you rock with me, hey. You know. I've been hearing a lot of people do crazy stuff. I mean, it's, I mean, I did a couple things like, you know, being a, the uh, drive-thru. And I'd be like, hey, man, let me pay for the person behind me. How much is they stuff? I've done that before. You know. I did a little stuff like that. Just, you know, it it's not nothing that makes me feel good. It just just something I seen and somebody I'm like, oh, I'ma make they I'ma make they day. Crazy part about it, seeing this guy, he wasn't actually homeless. The guy hustled, you know. I seen the guy had a bucket, little scrub, go down to the car wash, detail the cars and stuff like that. Guy was walking with his kid one day. He said, could you bless me with some money? Uh, give me something to eat. I said, no, nah, I ain't got nothing. In actuality, I think I had about like, uh, I think about $800 in 20s. But I was like, I ain't got no change. I'm not finna get a dude a 20. I got 800 so by the time I'm trying to pull one out, I'm damn near gonna pull the whole knot and I might end up dropping them on the ground. So I was like, nah. So, crazy part, got a real nice check, you know, did a little job too, and Friday came, you know, I was like, I got money in my pocket, you know, I got a check coming in, I'm like, man, I'm going to give that guy a 20. Almost two weeks went by, didn't see the guy. So, Friday come. Get ready to leave. Uh, my job. Seen dude. Pulled over. I said, hey, man. He's like, what's going on, fella? I said, 
Remember about two, three weeks ago, you asked me for some change, get you something to eat. I said, here you go. Actually gave him a 20. So it really kind of defeated the purpose, but you know, I gave him a 20. And dude was happy. Man, appreciate it, man. Hey, yeah, I like that. You know, crazy part is most people, we don't even have it to give. You know, when a homeless person's begging, Half of the people out there, you know, they really do need it. Other half just, you know, doing drugs or whatever. And I've always been taught, give out your heart. Whatever they do with that money, that's on them. You gave that money with the intent of having a good heart and looking out or doing something for a person. So if you're worried about what these people doing with your money, don't give it to them. Hell, because if I see somebody that I think might be using drugs or I'm giving them some money to use drugs, I'm not going to give it to them. It's just plain and simple. I mean, they could be just coming off a high or, you know, um, having withdrawals, having the shakes or whatever. Look like they on drugs. But my thing is, they look half decent. You know, they look like they're down on their luck. I'll shoot them a dollar or two. You know, they ain't going to get rich with me, but hey, if I see somebody out there working, you know, they down on their luck, hell, them will be the ones that get more money from me than the people begging on the street because I'm seeing them try. If I see a guy with nice clothes and just come to me, hey man, you know, I ain't going to lie, got a bad break. I, I just need a little money to get by. Cool. I'll shoot it to him. Shoot them a little extra, more than five dollars or something like that. But if you coming to me homeless, dirty clothes, I mean, you just giving up. You ain't even really trying. I give you a dollar, it may be some change. But you know, going back to your heart, man. I mean, that's the crazy part. I mean, going back to the beginning, you know, that's what I was saying about the guy doing this stuff with his business, not really preparing and and kind of lost out. I mean. It's crazy, like, you got to prepare yourself for the wins and the losses. And the point of it is, God knew that this junk was going to take off and make him some money. He basically Cadillac like for a minute. When he could have been stacking his money even more, and the money he had, spending on everyday things, he didn't. He just can't let. But, you know, ultimately, he realized when all this stuff was going down and he got his got his wit back, that's when he started stepping out and making moves. But it wasn't too late because, you know, he still had that plan B in the hole. It's just that, you know, it kind of set him back from the future goal that he was trying to accomplish and get stuff handled. I mean, it didn't set him back. He still rocked out good doing something better and different. I mean, doing something different, but you know, in the end, hey. So, you know, ultimately, man, start planning. Trying to get stuff set up in your life, man, to where you're not really depending on nobody borrowing money, man, because it, it's coming down to be two type of class right now. It's going to be the poor and the rich. That's it. And the minute the middle class is gonna be gone. I mean, the way things are going now, is it gonna be in poor or are you gonna be rich? A lot of these people becoming millionaires overnight through the stock and like that stuff is gonna die down, man. People like I mean, it's gonna it's gonna spark a lot of rich people from inventions and stuff, but just in general, it's not going to be this bubble where millionaires are born almost every other day. That's that's going to slow down because the people with the money, they trying to stay at the top. And the crazy part is they they not having kids. Like, who are they leaving this stuff to? You know, that's, that's one of the things I've always wanted was kids for my legacy, you know. I'm going to pass my stuff on to my kids. I was joking with my wife. I told her, I was like, if I die, 
am I will? I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, I already know you're gonna try to leave it to the boys, the boys and everything, the younger boys. And I'm like, of course. I say, for one, if I die too young, my younger kids are not gonna get a chance at life with me. So, me leaving money to them is gonna cushion that blow. With you, you're gonna be all right. You know, I'm gonna leave some, I'm not gonna leave you broke. I'm gonna leave you enough to pay the house off and have some money if I already told them. I know you're not gonna work for a whole year. I'm at least have that set up to where if you don't wanna pay the house off, you can pay the half of the house off and take the other little money, still have your job, you know, take off about two years or so, whatever how, and grieving and get your, get your stuff together. Same thing with my older kids. You know, they don't think they go. They might don't think they gonna get no money from it, but I got them. That's I mean, they're officially my blood, so I got them too. They're not gonna get a lot because as time go on, I'm gonna see the progress in their life, and you know, according to how they move, that's what I'm gonna leave for. It ain't gonna be much because they should already have their life together. They should already have things going forth in their life and, you know, building foundations. Hell, while I'm here, I'm seeing the progress. They're reaping the benefits of me now. The younger kids are not going to reap those benefits because they're going to need that helping hand when they get older. They're older, so I'm going to give them their helping hand now. It's just all about them listening and taking heed of what I'm trying to tell them and stuff so they can better their lives. But, you know, that's all I want to get on here and talk about that, man. I mean, just, you know, making a plan, sticking to it, man. Not not Cadillac, man. Accomplished. You know, that's what it's all about. All right, man. I'm out.